So uh, welcome everybody. So uh, this is uh, Hong Kong U Engineering Admission Talk. So uh, I am uh, Dr. C.K. Cho. Uh, I'm from the Computer Science Department from the Engineering Faculty. So um, besides being a teacher in Computer Science, I'm also the Director of the Hong Kong U Engineering Innovation Wing Projects. So this is going to be the focus of today's talk. I will talk about what do we mean by Innovation Wing. This is a very exciting project that our future students will enjoy these facilities and this is going to be making your study life not be the same as the current one. Um, so this is going to be very exciting. So today's talk, we are saying that we have an exceptional engineering study experience. So for this year, I know everybody's life's different. I'm also uh, very concerned about our potential students because you guys are preparing for the examination probably. You will be having the examination very soon in a few days. And um, your school life is different, the world is different now. So I uh, expect that your university life will no longer be the same and it will also be very different because you know technology and the world is always evolving. So what are you going to achieve in the coming four years? So in this talk, I would like everybody to think about these questions. And in fact, I would like to start my talk with a polling. I would like to ask everybody this question. What are you going to achieve in these coming four years? We have these uh, few answers. You can choose more than one. Are you going to just aiming for graduate with a good honor, getting a good job, start a company, make more friends, or getting professional knowledge, or in fact, you are not sure for now, you are still busy for your examinations, uh, worrying whether you have uh, enough score to pass and uh, entering any of the programs. So um, yeah, just let me know about it. Okay? And I hope through this question, you also think about what are you going to do in this coming four year? And this becomes a fuel for you to working harder now because you are now have an objective. Okay? So I see many students, a very good student, they are saying that uh, they would like to get professional knowledge. And, uh, but I also see many students say not sure for now, which is still okay, because when I ask many year one, even up to year four students, these questions, what you're going to achieve, oh, they still answer me not sure for now. And I think it's not okay if you are a university student. But if you are planning to enter Hong Kong engineering, that is something that you have to start thinking of, okay? So uh, through this talk, I'll give you a lot of hints about uh, or guide you think about what you're going to achieve. And we provide a lot of resources to help you to achieve that, okay? All right, so um, you see the first slides here. Actually, this is one of my classroom in Hong Kong U, so uh, like one year ago. So it seems like a lecture-based classroom settings. Are you going to be just like attending this kind of lecture, learning new knowledge in the university like this? Of course, yes, but it is not all of the story in, uh, in these four years. So of course, what you're going to do is going through this very important stage. You have to critically analyze the revolutionary ideas that have led to any of the breakthrough. You have to learn about the history, how we got here. And another thing is you have to master the current emergent technologies. That is something that you have to learn in order to give you the fuel for you to invent something new, right? And then you have to also develop a vision for our future. And what's more important thing is these three things does not always come in just a sequence. At this time, you can also develop a vision for your future. For example, if I'm very interested in handling, for example, the current uh, coronavirus problem, I have a heart to deal with it. What would be your vision about the future world that you would like to build, what are technologies that you would like to bring in order to make the world better? So something comes with your idea, and then in your university study, you learn from what people have done in the past, you master the current technology, and then more importantly, you bring your ideas into reality, okay? So what we are looking for are innovative, knowledgeable, and most importantly, visionary students. So in future, if you have a chance to come to the interview, you let us know that you have some ideas in your mind about engineering, something that you would like to achieve, but maybe at this moment, you still don't have the knowledge yet, 
but at least you have the goal. You have something that in your heart that you would like to achieve. Then that is the students that we are looking for. Okay? So just go through some example. For example, when I was secondary school students, like 10 to 15 years ago, when I go to cinema, what I would do when I go to buy tickets, I will line up and then if I'm so unfortunate that um, when it's my turn, all the tickets sell out, then I, have, uh, I cannot buy my tickets. That is the world when I was like a teenager. So what is the world now? So by that time, if you were the engineer, if you're innovative enough, by that time where in internet is just uh, getting popular, people will think about, okay, can we put things online to avoid people queuing up in front of the camp uh, for the cinema? So of course, this is some innovative idea and they make it a reality by implementing these applications, right? So this is what we call innovations at that time. So you see innovation is actually time related. Some ideas, if it is implemented right now, can solve the problem now, then it is innovative, okay? So you have to bring your idea into action before it expires, okay? So if you are satisfied with the current technologies, then in fact, then we are just living in the past. So as a good student, you can start from now, observe what's happening close to you and see what are the things that you can add on and invent more. So people will not be just satisfied with the technologies we have here. In fact, what we have now is even better, right? We have like uh, one-stop booking um, apps across multiple cinemas. So I just can tell what movie I would like to watch and then this can just simply tell me which cinema I should go for and then I can just simply buy a ticket. So this is what we have now. Can you invent more on that? Yes, sure, you can, right? So in the past, when I was a teenager, I carry coins when I go for paying for bus fare. So people are talking about, okay, we have autobus card system, the smart card payment system, which is good. We are happy for having this very innovative technology for 10 years and nobody innovate more. And then what's happened now is that this kind of technology carrier smart card may be going to be expired soon because in many countries we have smart payment system. We use our mobile phone for the payment, right? So you see how engineers invent things at the time to make new contribution to the world with the technologies that we have. Okay, so I would like to ask you guys some more questions. Probably you guys uh, do not have these technologies at home, but are you aware this is happening in the market? So this is what we call a milkmaid. It's just simply a glass container that plug into a smart base that stay in your fridge. But now it's installed with a pH sensor, installed with a weight sensor. So it can tell us, detect how long time the milk has left and it spoils. It tells us how many cups are left. So with these informations, they even provide the apps that let you access data remotely so you can know when to pick up more at the store. So if this is the current technologies that you know about, you will always ask yourself this question. Good engineering students will always ask, I'm not satisfied with this technology, although I'm impressed. But I'll ask, do I have follow-up ideas to make it better? Okay? So do you have any follow-up ideas? You don't need to have the ability to implement it, but everything starts with your idea in your mind. Okay? So when I talk to my students, Maybe they say, okay, just tell me how many cups left. Remind me to buy from the store is not good enough. I will invent something like connect these technologies with some of the convenience store close to me so that I can have one click and this meal can be delivered to my home. So it creates a new business model as well, right? So this is what we call adding on, creating something new, innovations. QR code enabled virtual store happens everywhere all over the world that we can just simply stick the poster. So you see these uh, are the poster of the product, but not the real product. We can stick it everywhere on the wall so that people would like to buy this product, they scan the QR code and then make a purchase, right? So um, looks like this is something new, but again, you ask yourself, is there anything that you can do more to make it more advanced and more convenient? Is there anything that you can do? There are many things, interesting things that we can do. Oh, I put in these uh, hints here. Have you guys uh, watched the movie Harry Potter? Uh, you see the paintings, they are actually moving, right? So now with LED panels, they're very popular. We are not posting the poster there. 
In fact, this can be LED panel displaying the products there. If it's LED panel, then we can change the product. If we install a camera in front of this poster, we know who are standing in front of the poster and watching our poster. If we know about the gender, the age, then we can do something like this, all right? So this kid says that, all right, if my parents see this poster displaying the toys that I would like to play, then it would be great. My parents may be buying this product for me, all right? So you see with the current technology popular of the LED monitor, we can do things more, okay? So I think uh, the future world will not be different and uh, we will no longer be the same, we will be very different. And because um, all the students now have a lot of technology to play with, to invent something new. So that's why your future in your university study, you have to definitely pay attention to these new technologies that you have because they become your tools to invent new things. You have to learn artificial intelligence, machine learning technologies, internet of everything. You have to pay attention to the drive, the less car, crowd technologies, free printing technologies, all these things you learn from the university. Okay? But it doesn't mean that this is the end of the story. Because in engineering, it's a very special subject because we look for students that have the ideas in the mind and then they learn about these new technologies. These two things put together and you will have your own ideas that makes you a different. And with this, in your four years of study, you will do this thing, is to take action. Because if you just have the idea, not take action, get expired or even implemented by others, that's no good, right? So we are looking for students with ideas and you learn about skill sets here and then you take action in Hong Kong engineering to make your dream come true. So in order to help you achieve this, in fact, there are many new things happening in Hong Kong engineering. One course that uh, you do enter engineering, uh, the first year you will take this course. We require all the engineering students to take this course. This is called engineers in the modern world. Why this is important? Because this is a course that is newly designed for first year engineering students that learn about the skill set to bring their ideas into reality, including not just technical skills, about project leading skills, presentation skills, everything that help you making good use of the resource of the university in order to invent something new. And this course is very special is that there are freedom for you to invent new stuff with the help of our professors and our senior students. These are just some successful stories. I'll just take one. Uh, this is a Smart Life West. This is an idea from a year one student. She would like to add in electronic and smart elements in the Life West to improve its ability. All right, and then she bring it to this course to gather the resource and she really try to make the prototype and make it real. And this will be a good starting point for her to continue to develop this idea further in her upcoming years or even final years or even making it a startup to make the impact all over the world. So these are something that we have already planned for you in the first year, helping you, guiding you and providing resource supporting you to achieve something that is different from what we have now. All right, so of course, um, in order to better equip our students, Hong Kong U engineering students, we would like them to have these four very important properties or characteristics. So first of all, in order to make the ideas in your reality, they have to be responsible. They have to have a mission to make better world with technology innovation. So you show us you have these um, passions when you're going for an interview of any interaction with us. The second thing is entrepreneurship because it has to have the ideas to get the resource and then turn your idea into reality. Although some people may say, okay, this may not be a good idea. And you focus and then you try and then you test and then you go through a lot of failure and then finally you don't give up and then you achieve. And then the third one is awareness. If you're not aware of what's happening all over the world, you don't know what they need, then it's the things that you invent may not be useful, right? So awareness is also very important. Finally, finally, leadership, because you're no longer working alone. In university, we have people from different backgrounds. Even in engineering, we have different programs. You will have a chance to work with people with different expert backgrounds or even from cross faculties. We have people working with 
uh, faculty of medicine or business, they have uh, expertise. We put them into a team that actually simulates the world, real world, because in the future, you are no longer just working with engineers. You have to have the skill set to communicate with different people and being able to lead, but not being just simply all following instruction is also very important. So I wish you take these four letters together. And that's why what we say, if you achieve these four things, you become real Hong Kong you engineers. So that is the things that you're going to achieve in these four years. So in order to even better help you to nurture these real engineers things, um, we have built something real for you. So this is what we call Hong Kong U Innovation Wing, located at the heart of the campus. What is this? This is a facilities for you. If you enter engineering, you will be able to enjoy using these facilities. So this is actually uh, offer ample space, a very big space at the heart of campus for you to form interdisciplinary groups. You need place to hang out with other students, discuss your ideas, and then it provides prototyping facilities for you to make things come true. And it's also a platform to showcase other students' achievements so you can learn about the success from others and inspire new ideas. So um, Innovation Wing provides four pillars in order to support you to become a successful Hong Kong new engineer. So the first one, you organize activities. We have already organized some. So I will give you a website so that you can visit and then see um, what are the interesting things going on. Second one, connections. Because you come here uh, from a secondary school, you come here to meet friends, but we don't want you to just meet friends of your same age. You would like to meet some successful people in your field. And then they, they can share with you a lot of good experience for the things that you're going to achieve next in the future. For example, you would like to work on AI robotics. Uh, if you just discuss with your friend, you may assemble some toy cars with some very um, like, uh, 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 funny aspects that you will play with your friend. But you work with the professional people who work in the AI field and uh, robotics fields, then you gain a lot of um, uh, experience and very, very valuable stuff. So provide connection is very important. And then facilities, of course, I will lead you through some of the facilities that we provide for you. And then knowledge, community. In the university, I think you meet a lot of people with the same idea, same passions. It's very important to hang out with them with a common goal and then achieve something together. So this is also something that you uh, encounter in the innovation way, these four things, okay? All right, so as I've mentioned, activities. I would like everybody to pay attention to this engineering in a show because this is the first ever show that we unite all the engineering departments for our innovative project. We all have a showcase day and we put all these projects online so that people can learn about what are the things that is happening you may also find out interesting project. Maybe some of you will find out, okay, this project I have an idea before, but university students, my senior students already implemented, but I have follow up ideas to do it better. So this is also an inspiring platform that you can uh, learn about this innovative idea. Go to this website, go to first engineering Inno show and see what are the interesting things there. So I wish you and you enter Hong Kong engineering in your first year, you will also join our engineering Inno show. In this platform, you also have a chance to present your idea to some of the industrial experts to gain valuable feedback from them, okay? Another thing is connections. One of the connections, for example, uh, we have alumni everywhere because Hong Kong U Engineering is one of the most um, uh, oldest, that, that means oldest uh, engineering school in Hong Kong. That means our alumni network is the strongest. We have a very strong alumni network that they are already very successful people all over the engineering world and even all over the world. So with this very strong alumni support, in fact, you have very good connection when compared with other institutes. This is some very strong point. So why not we just make good use of them? So I encourage everybody to join us to join this very strong supportive community so that you not only have the people who are students in your uh, own community, you also have these uh, uh, senior uh, graduated uh, uh, engineering uh, students who graduate many years, they come back to the campus, come back to Innovation Wing to coach you. This is an example. Uh, the Hong Kong uh, Airport Authority, they recently just uh, give us some of the, these uh, patrol robot for our students to further innovate it. Maybe, uh, maybe you also discover they are using this robot. 
but our student is thinking of new idea to make it better. Okay, so this is a chance that uh, you cannot find it an anywhere else. So um, a glance of uh, what happened in a way, uh, me as the Innovation Wing Director, I prepare this thing for you. I make it a hub for project research collaboration. So of course we have big event hall, uh, very cool designed brainstorming area, discussion room for you to hang with your friend, discussing new technologies and ideas. We also make it a hub for prototyping and problem solving. So uh, including makerspace. I know many secondary schools have makerspace, but this is gonna be one of the biggest and most advanced makerspace that you have um, currently. So come to visit when we are open. We are opening soon this year, okay? We also make it a hub for digital and other innovations because makerspace tends on physical stuff. We are also focusing on also digital side innovations. So we also provide facilities for this, such as AR, VR studio, multimedia studio, or this web lab stuff. And more importantly, that is the thing that you are going to treasure a lot in the university life, especially in Hong Kong engineering, is that in the wing will become a hub for advanced technologies. We professors defined a number of themes for our students to work on. I think there will be some themes that um, you're interested in. If not, then you propose new, but uh, at least at this moment, we find that smart technology for better living is something that is going to be very important in the future. AI and robotics, advanced it, and new materials. Uh, if you uh, look at what our vice chancellor working, actually his research is also in advanced and new, new material. And his background is also from engineering. So this is also something that our strength, uh, we would like our students to also work on this. Right, green technologies and sustainability, healthcare, and recently very important thing is e-learning. Right, so I think everybody not very happy about the current e-learning or the online way for doing lecture. We would like it to make it more interactive. We are not satisfied with the Zoom or any other video conferencing technologies now, but we have an idea. We are going to make this more interactive and better in the future. So e-learning will not, no longer be the same. And we invite you to join this advanced research group to make something that can impact the world, right? So, um, right, so uh, I'm going to, all right, so as our student community, uh, I will encourage you to join our student interest group. Uh, for this, you, and, you, you will really enjoy the entire engineering cycle. Because in the first slides, I show you a lecture room that you just sit and listen, right? But that's not a good way of learning. You acquire some knowledge, but most importantly is to take action. To take engineering action, you go through this entire engineering development life cycle. That when we develop a new product, you have to go through this stage. We would like you to have this experience in the university life, but not just to simply leave the university without this very important engineering experience. That's why I would like you to join student interest group. Oh, we have so many student interest groups that are existing. And I will invite one of these groups to do a sharing. Every group has their objective, have the things that they're passionate. These students, they are very passionate, they are very knowledgeable, and they work on their robot, their product, their ideas, day and night, and achieve the things. We have a very good recent achievement. I will invite them to speak a little bit um, to let you know a little bit more uh, later on at this uh, talk. Um, just a little bit more idea about uh, things. We have a group of students working on robotics technologies. I think many students very interested in this kind of technologies, right? So we engage our students to get there as a team and join some robotic competition. And this competition is not just simply a game. You have to really assemble the robot, but not just simply mechanical design, but also the AI, artificial intelligence design, the control of the robot, the uh, robot that have a wheel, the robot that can shoot, how can it shoot very precisely using um, camera, doing the autonomous focus, all these tracking things spans a lot of um, uh, departments and all the uh, disciplines knowledge, including me mechanical engineering, electronics, uh, computing, a lot, a lot of things. And all these things that you learn from the lecture bring into a real game that you can have to uh, implement and play and 
And this is something that are very interesting and our students are working on these uh, things. And our university is actually very supportive. We provide resource, we provide space, and we provide a lot of things to support you to um, learn through game and uh, achieve a lot of things and using new technologies on this. We also have students very interested in aerial technologies. I'm sure many of you are very interested in it. Drones, RC planes. We also have a team of students working on this. Um, for those students who cannot see the smoothly about the video background at the back, I think you will be able to download the, the, the presentation later on. But uh, this is actually a video showing uh, what's happened for the students who really bring their plane that they design fly overseas and then compete with uh, a lot of uh, famous universities all over the world. And our result is very, very uh, satisfactory. In fact, as a recent achievement, we achieved some um, very high um, ranking all over the world and even the highest one in Asia for this aerial technology stuff. So pay attention to our engineering our website. We have a lot of this news uh, for you to learn about. And, um, Okay, so there are actually many more student initiate projects. I cannot have time to go through every of them, but I'm sure in this university in Hong Kong U, you, you always find your friends who have some common interest as you and they are uh, your senior students, professors. Um, we are very welcome and waiting for you to join us. Game, something for the people with disability, the ocean, and then AI, car, all these things, we have people working on this and they are all in innovation point. So um, for you, you can plan ahead in these four years, what are you going to achieve? I wish you spend the time for exploring. So for students saying, I don't know, no problem. Exploring at first, and then you join the group for contributions, making key contributions. And at the last stage of these four years, I wish you becomes a leader for leading this team. Okay, so this is something that I wish you to achieve. And I think all our teachers have the same uh, mind in, in our mind. So, um, of course, these are the things that we already prepared to support you to become a very successful engineering students. We have funding, of course, all these robots are very expensive stuff. Funding and our workspace, brainstorming, meetings place also very important. You have a place to meet and work with people. Equipment uh, for prototyping is also very important, but what's more important is the things below, is you will find other students that have the common interest and you will gather and become an interest group. You have supervisors, we have, a we have teachers uh, supervising you because uh, some key technologies, if you learn about the advanced technology and apply, you will do something better than the current one, right? And then advisors, including uh, industrial, and academics, and finally, technical support, because you have to really make things happen, make a real product. This is something that we are going to support you. So um, this all will be bring together with the Innovation Wing project, which Innovation Wing is going to be open in this year. That means if you join us, you will be the first bench of students enjoy this. And your university life, actually, many senior students looking at this project, they think, okay, this year students, uh, actually they are very lucky because their university life will not be the same, right? So um, I will end my presentation with some, a few slides because uh, I wish you to also think about this because um, among all these things that you achieve, service learning is also one thing that I personally very focused on is that among these four years, you may achieve a lot of things this is one of my projects uh, a few years ago. My students work on this Kinect thing, but not for the video game playing, but they help the elderly um, home for uh, improving the rehab rehabilitation service to access the uh, risk of falling for the elderly. So this is a technology that they work on, but eventually we would like to bring these technologies that they invented back to the society to contribute. And it is only when you make these benefiting people, you will experience how important engineering is to the entire world, right? So if we engineers just stay in the classroom or just have ideas in our mind, we are not making impact. So you end up with very meaningful service learning um, experience in this four year that you will be able to contribute back to the society. 
So I also have students uh, like they are working on designing e-learning software. Oh, they not just simply benefiting the Hong Kong society. We also have connection all over the world. Like the people in other countries, they may not have the best education. They go there and then really to deliver this kind of education and knowledge to them. So we, Hong Kong U engineering students, right, learn, we share, and we care, right? And we are not just simply good ourselves. We also make people proud of us. So service learning is also something that you will foresee your four years will also enjoy if you join Hong Kong U Engineering. So let me end my talk with these four letters again, because these four letters will define what you will become and make you different and successful people. You will become a responsible people, you will become an entrepreneurial people, and of course you are aware what's happening all over the world, and you will become the leader of engineering after this four year of study in engineering in Hong Kong U. So as I promised everybody here, uh, I invite one of the many, many student interest group here to share with you some journey they have gone through. Okay, so maybe I invite uh, Timothy, who is the leader of the group. I let him talk about what he has done and probably he will do some advertisement to ask you to join his group as well. So uh, Timothy, please. Okay, sure. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Chen. We press this button for the next slide. All right. oh, Hi, everyone. I'm just quickly swapping the slides. Uh, my name is Timothy. I'm the leader of the Bayou Project. We are working on the world's fastest robotic fish. And I'm glad to tell you that just right before Chinese New Year, we managed to achieve that goal. Our goal was to set, cover a 50 meter swimming pool within 30 seconds, which is I'm quite sure it's faster than almost all of you who can swim. Unless, of course, you are in the high school varsity team, then yes, you might swim faster than all fish, but it's a very slim chance. Anyway, what we like to share is the entire journey. So just to answer Dr. Choi's question previously about you know, what are the certain goals that you can have in university? Well, I can tell you this was mine. We wanted to set a world record before we graduated. So quick question here. How would you build a world fastest robotic fish? So how it started, how the project started was a few of us just gathered and we were talking to each other. Hey, you know, all these lectures are really cool and whatnot, but we wanted to do something else. So one of our friends, his name is Sadant, he's not here unfortunately, he approached a professor and said, Professor, I would like to build a world's fastest fish. The professor just heard the idea and it's like, yes, let us do it. How do you do it? Well. We didn't know. So we went to the first thing that we thought about. We started prototyping. There you go. We started with this small fish. We looked at, we actually went to look at real fishes and started observing and we just tried to build something. Very simple, we have the head over here, the body with a tiny little motor that wiggles the tail and a cut piece of plastic to try. That was the, our first foray into actually understanding what a robot fish or how it could swim. And obviously it didn't get the speed, but we kept going and pushing and pushing and pushing. And by doing that, our system got even more and more complex. It grew from the little fish from a group of two or three students. And then suddenly we had a whole entire team as we managed to find more and more students who were more interested. Because we realized that after trying it ourselves, we, uh, our group was started as a mechanical and electrical engineer, but we didn't have any expertise with regards to computer science or programming and just building the entire thing. Most of us, while we did pretty well in class, we had no idea how to build a robot fish. And we it built it more complex until we arrived at the final design, the, the fish that actually built, uh, won us the Guinness World Record. So please, if I can invite my friends to come to stage. And voila. This is the actual robot fish that got the world record. We managed to score, swim 50 meters, that is the whole entire Olympic size pool within 27 seconds. And as you can see, it might look pretty intimidating and whatnot, but most of the parts are actually built within materials that you can find very easily. For example, the whole entire body was 3D printed thanks to the Innovation Wing for helping us with that. And 
all the parts, bearings, motors, we simply got it off Taobao. And as you can see, it's filled with duct tape. I can tell you for this, duct tape is an engineer's best friend. Is there anything you guys would like to share? Uh, I'll share an interesting story, like how miracles happen in engineering. So we actually had two Guinness World Record attempts. The first attempt was in Hong Kong, in Causeway Bay, and we were just 0.3 seconds short of the record. Two days later, we went up to Shenzhen, and trust me, we didn't change anything. All we did was just charge the batteries. And two days later, we actually achieved the record. So I would say miracles do happen in engineering. And Leo, would you like to share your story, what you did during the competition? Yeah, during, during the, the competition, I was in charge of the video taking of underwater part. And uh, actually, during the world record try, uh, the fish, the speed of the fish was so far that it's even scary. And I was so scary about to turn on the power of the GoPro. <laughs> but luckily, we still got the world record, except our, uh, the other part of the video. So. Yeah. yeah. So we wish that we could actually show you live, like the fish swimming with it. I like, trust me. Once you see it swimming in water, you can understand like the grace and magnificence of an actual robot fish, and compare it to the ships that we have, and realize that they were miles apart from actually learning about how a fish actually swims. So thank you. So this uh, this whole entire project took the span of four years over many different groups, and a lot of us we j the only thing we knew was simply to experiment, just keep trying and trying and trying because really that goal was none of us knew at the beginning that we could actually achieve that. It was just a pipe dream, but finally after four years of working with many many people, with many support from all the professors and teachers, we managed to achieve it. Three, two, one, go! And here's a few clips I just brought up to share. So specifically, what we realized, initially we tried to build the fish using typical robot technology, yeah? rigid stuff, but then we realized it wasn't enough. So we started going into soft and flexible materials, and that actually turned out to be how it works. And as you can see on the slides, the top leftmost one is an underwater view of how the fish swims. And then we got a few slow-mo videos to actually just capture what goes on when a fish is actually swimming. And with that, again, the last thing I want to say is this is a project with an ent uh, support from many, many people, and that's what engineering really is about. It's about together as engineers building something magnificent. So thank you. Okay, well, I, I'm sure that we have a great time. That's uh, the real engineer, that's uh, what they have done, not just in the classroom. It's in fact, most of the time spent uh, outside the classroom. Okay, so before I start, I would like to uh, introduce myself. My name is uh, Kenneth, Kenneth Wong. That's uh, the chairman for the engineering admission committee. So uh, uh, other than uh, the really impressive uh, presentation, so I'm sure that uh, some of you may have some questions that's uh, being raised that can be related to uh, the innovation of entrepreneurship or can be anything that's uh, related to admission. So we are already seeing that the flashing light that uh, means some questions coming in. So uh, thanks again for our amazing speaker. So now we have some questions. So let me try to look into it and uh, to see like what kind of question that we have. Okay, so that will be easy. Okay, so uh, the question is, uh, uh, the first one is related to the first year. Is that really commonly admitted? So I think that will be uh, one of the advantage for our, uh, especially about the main program. That's uh, so all students that joining to Hong Kong U that's uh, for faculty engineering that join it as a like that's why we have the common admission. So uh, that's uh, students that are studying for the same set of courses that's uh, for both related to the the math, related to physics, related to programming, that related to like that's uh, about the common core and all those courses. And that after the, the uh, one year of the coursework, that's uh, probably they can make up their mind, that's uh, which specific program that would, what that's uh, the most interesting. So that's uh, towards the end of the first year, that student will go in to admit, uh, uh, declare that's uh, the program that they would like to admit. It. Okay. So uh, second question, that's uh, 
uh, about the new arrangement, specifically about IGCSE candidate. Okay, seeing that the IGCSE has been cancelled globally, I know that uh, is one of the major concerns to a lot of the students around the globe. That's especially for like uh, due to the, the COVID nineteen. And uh, well, Hong Kong is actually also closely monitoring the situation uh, with the exam body. And uh, so right now, it's uh, well, I can say that uh, we are doing very flexible. So other than specifically related to IGCSE, it's uh, now, in fact, there's some other option as well. If you go to the website, you probably notice that there's a, a list of exam that student can also take it out of that. I, I understand that will be uh, a lot of uncertainty, but especially for some of you have already studied pretty hard for specifically for IGCSE. Okay, so, but as I said, that due to the special uh, circumstance this year, so we will make it flexible. So if you're welcome to consider some other alternative exam that's other than the IGCSE as well. So that's will make it uh, flexible this year. Students can also uh, consider applying the waiver or that's uh, specifically related to uh, the, that's, uh, the language requirement. So we kind of make it, as I kind of keep emphasizing the flexibility in that sense due to the special uh, circumstance this year. Okay, so uh, that's, well, that's to take it, uh, well, let me try because it's to keep updating, okay? So uh, which subjects that do we have to take in the IB and the DSE for admission? Uh, well, there's a talk about IB and DSE, but I think in general, that's uh, if, specifically if you talk about the main program, about the BNE, the engine science, that's the math and the physics are required. Okay, so that will be, that's uh, the major uh, difference from maybe from other program in Hong Kong. And for FinTech, the math is required. And uh, so the specific details that you can actually check the website because in case that I may miss some other details. Okay, so, but we have all these uh, on the website as well. But in short, then you can, uh, that's uh, for the main program that require the math and the physics and while the FinTech of math is required as well. Okay, so some question is, uh, uh, one question is about like the interview or academic. Okay, well, it's, well, it's very hard to say that's uh, how we define academic. Okay, so but we can argue that uh, we may not necessarily ask you a very technical question like why that's uh, the equation and all those things, but maybe something that relevant to like the logical sense. Okay, so that how you like look into the problem or how you explain the problem logically. Okay, so that's uh, this exactly the point of our engineer. That's uh, whether this is a real engineer required. Uh, that's your. Uh, that's also the logical thinking as well. Okay, so that's why uh, you can say it's academic in that sense, but may not be necessary. That's very technical to the details that you have learned in the high school and all those things as well. Okay, so uh, a question about like any uh, exchange program for N uh, BN students. So that's the whole point. So we strongly encourage that uh, for exchange uh, opportunity. Okay, in fact, this is like what we, as an engineer, we in fact we're a global engineer in a sense. Uh, that's why we have a lot of uh, exchange opportunity, both from the university level and the faculty level as well. Okay, so that makes it the students that's, uh, I think if you recall in the previous mission talk, we talk about a lot of uh, different university that's uh, in North America, in, that's, uh, in, the, uh, in the Europe, that's in the Asia country as well. So that makes it a lot of uh, option as well. So, okay, so I think that's a, uh, so uh, any, uh, I don't know, the question is saying that A level will cancel, oh yeah, I think that's a DCA level will be canceled, and that's uh, uh, whether they will take the predicted, uh, predicted grade. So I think that's, uh, uh, I think in principle, this is like what we are going to do, especially about like both the, the, the GCE uh, uh, A level and also even the IB that's has been canceled. So in that sense that we will take that uh, uh, predicted score that's uh, for, provided by like the the, uh, the candidates and the school as well. Okay, so asking about the extension to like the acceptance timeline. So for sure, in general, that's uh, we, you're expected to follow the ex acceptance uh, deadline. But uh, well, what we all understand, as I said, that uh, given this is kind of a very special circumstance. So. Uh, if you have any difficulties, so do let us know. So I, I can admit that uh, we have some uh, extension, okay? Because exactly uh, 
some country may have the sort of lockdown that so they cannot go uh, it's, uh, make it very immobile to uh, to accept the offer and all those situation or like uh, like deposit that uh, uh, all those arrangements. Right? We all understand this is a like very difficult situation, especially in some country. So we make it uh, uh, flexible. So if you submit a request, that we will consider that uh, whether it's uh, acceptable to extend the, the deadline in that sense. Okay, so, uh, well, uh, HD, uh, HD programs are student admitted to year three uh, engineering admission, uh, engineering, uh, uh, Hong Kong engineering. So, yes, so in that sense, so we have uh, a student admitted to the senior year. So, but again, it depends on the specific applicant. So some of them, they have, may have cho chosen like specific courses that are very relevant to our program. So that may earn them more credits being the exam. So, uh, it's, but in general, that's uh, we have students that uh, have a senior mission to like uh, the, the senior year phase as well. Um, Okay, so uh, one uh, specific question is, uh, can we like opt for like multiple minors? So, uh, well, uh, you can always opt for multiple minor, but the concern is uh, about um, the, because by itself, the engineering, the BNG program, the sort of curriculum, it's already pretty packed in the sense, because exactly that's uh, why we have a very hardcore training in the sense. So that means that uh, we have a lot of, uh, uh, in the sense that uh, the, the credits has been kind of packed in the set. So for sure, that means the student has, uh, may not be able to take too many minors. So for sure, you have to jiggle that uh, what will be uh, the coursework can be uh, uh, can be taken at the same time together with your main uh, BH program. Okay, so, uh, but on the other hand, that's uh, other than the, the main program, we'll call the BH main program for engineering science that they may be able to take more than one minor because that's uh, they may have more credits. Uh, actually, they have more credits for free elective. Okay, so that makes it like uh, slightly different for uh, engineering science students in certain sense that's that uh, there are more uh, choices. Okay, exactly because that's the credit requirement. Uh, uh, it's more, give them more free elective. That's uh, give them more flexibility in the sense. Okay, so uh, in general, when will the non jupus applicant receive the application result? Well, we can only say that uh, we expedite the process already. So faculty both uh, will process things as application and uh, we will provide ASAP. So if you do that, uh, like, express, like you have some inquiry, we're welcome to contact us. For example, you have been waiting for other, uh, maybe that waiting for other offers that's from other university, uh, institution that's your kind of uh, to want to know a little bit. Uh, 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 updated. So in that sense, you're also welcome to get in touch with us. Okay, so, uh, well, as I said, that's uh, related to uh, some country being locked down, that's uh, national lockdown, for example, in India, that make them the results a delay as uh, they are not very unsure about uh, that the result will be declared. Okay, so in the sense that uh, in case that's that cannot be received in time, right? So uh, as I said, this is like, we make it very, uh, try to be flexible as much as we can. So we are also updating situation from, from uh, I won't say day to day, but it's almost say it's at the weekly base that uh, we follow up what's the situation. So at this point that uh, we can say, uh, we will make it uh, as, uh, flexible in the uh, admittance requirement in that specific situation. Okay, so very good question. That's uh, uh, asking about that uh, the presentation today. That's uh, showed a lot of projects that looks like apparently uh, related to computer science, uh, electrical engineering, or electronics, or mechanical engineering. So that sounds like that the innovation curriculum uh, will also that kind of predominantly related to those kind of program. But in fact, this is not quite the case. So even if you're a civil engineer, that's uh, a lot of project. Just like Dr. Choi mentioned it today. That's uh, we have only like. 30 minutes or uh, 45 minutes of presentation. So that constrains us to only choose one, like the very most recent, that's a world record that we created. Okay, but I can reassure you that the other uh, uh, curriculum or program, they also have a lot of innovation uh, 
a component as well. In fact, it's more like depends on the student that's or what, how they would like to approach. Okay, that's uh, whether that's uh, uh, not just necessary for only computer science, uh, electrical, electronics engineering sense. Okay. Oh, they also want to know uh, the list of projects that in the past in civil engineering department. I think if you, uh, I know it's a kind of a, a lot of information that presented today. Okay, but you're welcome to to go back as it's been uh, taped anyway. So that's uh, in fact some project have been listed out. It's related to civil engineering, like the the, the Hong Kong U project in there. That's definitely related as far as I can recall immediately from my head. But again, that you can check the website for these kind of uh, innovation uh, initiative. Okay, so uh, specifically required that um, about the uh, like the admission requirement for the high the high diploma and uh, uh, accept the Hong Kong engineering. So again, it's a uh, that's I think in general that's uh, we I can't recall it on top of my head, but I think that's uh, you do expect the GPA it's around like three point three or above, right? So that's what I. But again, that's change it uh, have some like uh, variation. Right. So, for example, some students can be very, like, uh, they a very great job for certain courses. That's also we have got. Uh, but in general, you can say that's the uh, average or uh, the GP in the sense. Okay, so uh, specific about like the, uh, the about the hundred percent scholarship for like the, uh, the requirement that's uh, very difficult uh, given this kind of uh, situation like the CIA is being cancelled. It's, uh, it's difficult. Well, as I said, this is uh, well we we kind of updating the situation. So we I, I cannot say at this point that okay, uh, what will be the corresponding like uh, requirement to have hundred percent of the scholarship. But I think we will keep updating in that sense. Okay, so uh, specific about like in case that uh, let's say uh, they they are not well that they no travel advisory for few more months that will Hong Kong provide online courses for the interim period. So we assure you that even uh, we have been I, I think by now we are a little bit more experienced that uh, conducting online courses like online teaching and the learning for both the, uh, for the current student already. So I think it's uh, like the worst scenario in case that's uh, yes allow the travel or it's not encourage to travel that's that uh, we definitely have the this kind of uh, online teaching and uh, learnings uh, for students as well okay so uh, one question related to asking about uh, the Cape Zone's experience in the Hong Kong U engineering courses and what will we do during this kind of experience and how would be great okay so um, it actually depends on the program and the department as well some Called Cape Stone Experience, some call uh, Senior Design Project, some call Final Year Project. But its idea is very similar. That just you conduct that one uh, mm -hmm. pretty much during your last year of study at uh, of your bachelor degree. And uh, so it's usually, I won't say, in fact, it's very uh, different variety. Okay, because I'm from Triple E, actually, electronic engineering. So we have some like uh, both individual project, we also have group project, we have a uh, like, uh, programming base, we have simulation base, that's uh, works, uh, hands on base, like uh, so that's uh, the, the robotic fish, what we have uh, that definitely is uh, a lot of uh, hands on experience. So it's very, a, lot, a very wide variety in the sense, okay, and how will it be graded? Again, that's very, uh, very hard to say because uh, again, it depends on specific uh, program, okay, so uh, that's. I mean, some variation from the program to program. Okay, so asking about like when do engineering students generally start looking for internship? Uh, well, again, it's very it's, uh, depends. Okay, from especially from program to program. Okay, some of it spend some some time during that uh, the end of third year. That's uh, like the, the the summer time during the end of the third year. That's where they do three months. Some even spend longer time. Like uh, it's uh, with some. Some uh, program, the sandwich program that we can spend the one full year for sure. That means you also move your uh, graduation time side backward as well. Uh, I mean, that's our both for the same time as well. Okay, so I think we are wrapping up and let me just take uh, one to two more questions. Um, 
but one question is about like what being asked you to eat the food. As I said, there's not necessarily be the, those get very technical question like the one formula or is it, but it's more like that's your logical thinking, that's how you present, how you look into the problem and all those things as well. Okay, so we're well, talking about like the internship that uh, will university help us to find when we are saying is that, well, uh, we will post the internship, like actually that, in fact, it's more than what you can look into. That's a lot of opportunity in the website and you can check and apply that. And also different department that uh, they may have a specific like disciplinary that's our internship that make it do a lot of options as well. Okay, so I think that's, yeah, it's about time for it. I think we have some more questions, but again, uh, that's what we're going to think. Yeah, I think that's, uh, uh, well, specifically what about the IB, do I need to high level, stand level, math for the engineering degree? That's a short answer, it's just high level, okay? So I think out of that, uh, that's pretty much we have already addressed it already. It's, uh, so thanks a lot for uh, being with us today and uh, also a gentle reminder. So the next upcoming one, uh, we have another uh, virtual admission talk. It's on the 12th of May. It will be also on Tuesday. So in case that's, uh, uh, you're, I, I know that some of you probably studying for your public exam uh, that's on these Fridays. That's, uh, I know that will be keep you occupied, but that's just probably another hour or so that's uh, in case that you would, because uh, that specific the virtual admission talk is related to career. Okay, because now we have a lot of, like during your fourth years of study here, that uh, you also want to know what's next, okay? So that's, uh, this is why we also provide different stage of admission talk. So these upcoming ones specifically related to about a career, that's opportunity as well. So you're very uh, uh, encouraged to join us in about uh, three weeks time, so, correct, right. And uh, also, uh, that's also relevant to the career, it's like uh, this year for us, that's we have a, you have a newly introduced what we call double degree because I know some of you ask about like related to about opportunity okay so that's uh, other than career perspective like the, the, the double degree what we are newly introduced is uh, actually related to main pro uh, what we call NGP and the, that's uh, the BME program that's uh, together the double degree with uh, is the, uh, the BBA okay so that's especially for uh, students that, that they also want to explore the different perspective specifically related to the business side. So that probably give you a very, uh, the golden opportunity that to explore that so double degree in that perspective. If you want to know a little bit more, so come back in three weeks time at the 12th of May. So we have another uh, virtual admission talk. So thanks again for joining us. And I hope, especially for those of you going to study that uh, start your DSC exam on this Friday. So stay safe and have a uh, fruitful exam. That's, uh, and also keep a, have a uh, enjoyable time. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Bye-bye.